Hello everyone, this is Carlo. Really happy to be back in my hometown. Today I'm gonna take you for a walk in one of my favorite areas, which is the area around the Pantheon. I recently managed to come back to Rome after almost two years. I thought it would be nice to share with you some of my favorite places, things to see and to try. They always say, if you want to really experience a city, go for a walk with a local. And yeah, I'm going to be your guide for the morning. Make sure you take notes. We will start with uh, a little coffee at Café Santo Stagio and then we will go for a walk. I chose this place because since 1938 they use a blend that is 100% Arabica only. Also, they are regarded to serve the best cappuccino in Rome and their recipe is a closely guarded secret. After a boost of caffeine, it's time to follow Salita de Crescenzi, which will take us to the magnificent Pantheon. I've lived in Rome for 31 years and this place still never ceases to amaze me. It is the only ancient Roman temple to survive to this day virtually intact. The impressive dome has a circular opening in the middle with the double function of lightening the weight of the dome and allow a stunning natural light in the building. The niches and chapels scattered all around contain beautiful pieces of art commissioned through the centuries by the Catholic Church. This was a beautiful start of the day and we're gonna continue walking to Piazza della Minerva. To welcome us is Bernini's Elephant Obelisk. The baby elephant that is carved on it is a tongue-in-cheek reference to the army of elephants that Hannibal used to attack the Roman Empire. On the background, the church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. If we keep walking along Via Piedi Marmo, we can see an apparently random marble foot wearing a sandal. It once belonged to an ancient statue, but to this day, the owner hasn't been identified. It's not me, I'm a size 10. Our next stop is going to be the church of Sant'Ignazio di Loyola, which is one of my absolute favorites in Rome. When this Baroque church was finished in 1685, it didn't have a dome initially. The artist Andrea Pozzo used the incredible trompe technique to create the illusion of an open, airy dome, and the result is wonderful. If you stand on the yellow marble disc on the floor, you can get the full effect, whereas the further you walk, the more you can see how skewed the painting actually is. There's also a strategic mirror if you're after a photo opportunity. Cool, it's time to walk along Via de Burro and be saluted by the stunning facade of Adriano's temple with its 11 sturdy columns in Piazza di Pietra. I love to walk in Via de Pastini, the little street nearby, with its busy restaurants, little fountains and cinema references, it really channels the true spirit of my hometown. And just like that, we are back in Piazza della Rotonda. Did you know that the fountain right in front of the Pantheon by Giacomo della Porta supports a tiny Egyptian obelisk that celebrates Ramses II? Well, now you know. Okay, I think it's time now to have a nice ice cream. If you are in this area around the Pantheon, there are a few very good options. If you want to try a lot of different flavors, you have to go to De La Palma. 150 flavors available. I mean, you will enjoy it. Our second tip is Grom. Grom is a franchise and it's very, very good ice cream. Really recommend it. But if you want to enjoy the traditionally best in this area, you have to go to Giolitti, and that's what we would do. Giolitti is a proper 19th century landmark in Rome, an elegant and timeless venue that you can't miss if you're in this area. Here we go, dark chocolate, pistachio and cassava, because I'm worth it. 
If you, like me, are a journaling and stationery addict, make sure you stop at Cartuleria Pantheon, a temple of vintage style cards, luxury journals, handcrafted paper and gift ideas. We are heading now to Piazza Colonna, where right opposite the column of Marcus Aurelius, we can enter Galleria Alberto Sordi, named after one of the most famous Italian actors of the past century. This shopping arcade is built and decorated in the Art Nouveau style. Okay, we went through the back exit of Galleria Alberto Sordi, and before going to Trevi Fountain, I want to take you to one of the best yards of a building in Rome. This private courtyard, now a pedestrian passage, is a real hidden gem that doesn't appear in most travel guides. I'm always mesmerized by the stunning decor of these walls. Painted by Giuseppe Cellini, these frescoes glorify the everyday life of aristocratic and middle-class women, highlighting their virtues and their beauty. Every time I come to Rome, I come here. It's one of my favorite places. Are you ready to see the absolute masterpiece, a place I never leave Rome without paying a visit to? Celebrated in Federico Fellini's movie La Dolce Vita, the Trevi Fountain, largest fountain in Rome, was recently fully restored and it's more stunning than ever. The three statues are Oceanus, God of the Water, Abundance and Salubrity. Even when it's full of tourists, this place has the power of clearing my mind and filling my heart with the timeless, magnificent beauty that you can only find here. I hope you liked this little itinerary. I'm not gonna throw the coin because I am from Rome, so I will come back. But you should throw the coin. And that's all for today. Don't forget to check the other videos on my traveling playlist for more destinations, adventures, and vlogs from around the world. And if you like them, feel free to like and subscribe. Take care and see you soon.